It's the biggest week of the year for Indigenous art in the Northern Territory. The National Indigenous and Torres Strait Islander Art Award has been announced and buyers and sellers are flocking to the Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair. But the two new federal government art policies are in the spotlight. Some dealers and galleries are worried the new schemes may have done more harm than good to an art market that's struggling to recover from the global financial crisis. James Glenday reports. At $15,000. At $15,000. Gentlemen's bid here at $15,000. For more than a decade, the Indigenous art market has been booming. At $23,000 here at the front at $23,000. It peaked three years ago, with nearly $24 million worth of Indigenous art sold at auction. And it's sold. It's yours. $24,000. It was estimated the industry was worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Then along came the global financial crisis and the market took a hit. Oddly, it didn't affect art initially, and there have been a number of things that have compounded the GFC plus some other issues that have developed that have made people a bit wary about investing or putting money into art. You know, you're always going to read stories about the sky falling in. Uh, what I see wherever I go is fantastic work being produced in such a way that the overall economic potential for Indigenous art will I believe, continue into the future. <laughs> this is one of the biggest weeks of the year for artists and dealers in Darwin. The National Indigenous and Torres Strait Islander Art Award has been announced and the Darwin Aboriginal Art Fair is underway, with artists keen to show off their latest work. These are the Samson Desert Rocks. Why do you take them? Because when I was a little girl, my grandmother used to take me to a the special place to show me these rocks. But this year, both artists and dealers are worried about where the market is heading. All the Australian art market has experienced a slowdown. People are more cautious with what they're doing and art is often a second um, object on the shopping list, but a very, very important one. You know, this is livelihood for Indigenous people. It's one of the few goods exports from remote Indigenous Australia. It has been a success story now for decades um, and it will be very negative if, if it goes down. While the art market is reeling from the impact of the global financial crisis, it's also been at the centre of a major federal government shake-up. Earlier this year, a voluntary code of conduct was introduced for Indigenous art. It's designed to weed out carpetbaggers, the unscrupulous operators who pay for art with drugs or alcohol and then resell it for a big profit. We have put in place more fair income reforms on Indigenous art than has ever been done by any government. There's just no question about that. A public company has been set up to administer the new code and dealers, art centres and galleries can all become members. Its success or failure may hang on just who signs up. A number of the dealers that I've been speaking to have said that they're not going to be signatories to it. So, you know, unless the whole industry is involved, then it's not going to work. I'll open up the bidding on this one uh, at $220,000 at dollars A couple of months ago, the federal government introduced a second initiative, a resale royalty scheme for visual artists. Now artists get a 5% cut when their work is resold for $1,000 or more. Congratulations, 290000 Painters and artists should be able to get a small share of the resale of their work when it resells for really high prices in the future, which is quite often the case, particularly with Indigenous art. This is virtually about um, loss of waterways, you know. Ben Pushman has travelled from Western Australia to Darwin to promote his paintings. He believes the resale royalty scheme will benefit artists and ensure they get a fairer share of the money being made from their art. It's a good idea. Yeah, because, you know, an artwork could go up tenfold, you know, and, and the fella's still not seeing a cent of it. But not everyone agrees. In remote communities, artists often sell their work directly to art dealers or art centres, who then exhibit and sell the work in a city gallery. This means when the work is sold in the city gallery, it is effectively the second sale, and resale royalties have to be paid. This financial impact of the scheme has sparked strong criticism. I think it's a really bad um, misunderstanding of, of the way the Aboriginal art world works, which is that artists need money then and there, not in 50 years' time or 40 years' time. 
and anything that, that has an impact on that has a, a, a consequent result on um, lowering their income and also causing huge administrative burdens. As I speak to either the artists and particularly the galleries, um, they're saying that it, it is a, an unrolling disaster. Even if an item sells for twenty dollars, they have to go through the process of reporting. It's a huge, onerous and very costly process for galleries. But both sides of politics will only commit to monitoring and reviewing the policies if they win office. The government says it'll be many years before the success of the schemes can be measured. In the long term, this is a market which will both increase in value and, with our decisions, produce additional benefits to artists as a whole. Those who make their living from the art market are confident Indigenous art will eventually bounce back. It's just like a, a steam train. There are lots of positive things that you could look at and say that those things will really um, keep it powering along. Never die because uh, you know, blackfellas will always have stories to tell and, you know, and love their culture and love the land. James Glenday reporting there.